In this video, I will state and prove two basic versions of the no free range theorem. Basically, the no free range theorem addresses a very natural question that may be raised in machine learning, namely, what is the best machine learning algorithm? And the no free range theorem roughly answers that there is no such a thing as a best machine learning algorithm. More precisely, it asserts that whatever clever machine learning algorithm you design, any other basic machine learning algorithm will be performing just as well if we average the performances of the two machine learning algorithms over the set of machine learning problems they aim at addressing. This can be interpreted as the fact that there is no golden rule in machine learning, although this might be a bit of an overstatement of the Nofluence theorem. Perhaps it rather says that priors do matter and we should include them if we want to obtain some strong theoretical guarantee about the machine learning problems. Having said that, it's probably better to leave aside these almost philosophical considerations and state the theorem itself. Actually, the trouble is that there are plenty of so-called no free range theorems. I feel that whatever version I'll give, nearly all of you are going to be mad and say that I did not state your favorite no free range theorem. So in this video, I have decided to present two basic no free range theorems, which I think give away the gist of it while remaining simple enough to state and prove. Let's state a first very basic, probably the easiest version of all no French theorems. Consider a set X of features, a set L equals to 0, 1 of binary labels. We'll include all unstructured hypotheses, that is, we're going to consider the set H of all prediction functions X to L as a hypothesis class, and a uniform probability distribution U over this set. In other words, if I draw f from u, then for any x, the probability that f of x is equal to 0 is going to be 1 half. Now consider any sample set S, uh, which is a subset of x. Assume a machine learning algorithm MLA computed a prediction function MLA of S. Then the no free range theorem asserts that for any x that's not in the sample set, MLA of S does not achieve better prediction than random guess i.e. for all sample sets S and any X that's not in the sample set. The probability for F drawn from U that the prediction of a machine learning algorithm trained with sample set S and applied to the feature X, the probability that this prediction is going to be equal to the real label F of X is equal to one half, not more, not less. I think that the theorem is pretty self-evident. Basically, we get no additional information about x after having observed s. So it's no surprise that our knowledge of f of x has not improved. In technical terms, the probability of f of x conditioned by the fact that we have observed s is not changed. It's the same as the probability distribution of f of x itself. So the odds of f of x being 0 and of being 1 are both still 1 half. Thus, whatever our prediction MLA of S and X is, the probability of it being the value of F of X will be one half. Let's move on to the second no free range theorem, which is a corollary of the previous one and has the advantage of not involving a uniform distribution over the hypothesis class. For any machine learning algorithm MLA and any sample size N that's smaller than the cardinal of X divided by two, there is a real prediction function f of h and a probability distribution d over the set x of features such that the expected probability of mispredictions over sample sets is at least one fourth. In other words, for any machine learning algorithm, there is a machine learning problem in which the machine learning algorithm behaves poorly. And this is not really because the machine learning problem is especially difficult. You can devise all the machine learning algorithms that will solve the machine learning problem. In fact, if you just pick, always pick the real prediction function f, this is a machine learning algorithm that solves the machine learning problem. Of course, it only solves this machine learning problem, and if you change the machine learning problem, it will fail. What happens is that the set of all machine learning problems is huge. It's like a huge room, and any machine learning algorithm is a sort of carpet that only covers part of this room. There is no way to cover all of the room with a single machine learning algorithm. Whatever carpet you put in a room, there will be a blank spot. And if I take a machine learning problem that's, this, that's in this blank spot, then our carpet will not cover it. At least that's how I interpret this second of theorem. 
let's get to the proof of this second no fringe theorem. First, let us define a subset Y of X of cardinal 2N. This is allowed because we know that the sample size is at most half of the size of the set of features X. And we're going to consider the uniform distribution D over the set Y. Let's first notice that the worst case is necessarily worse than the average case, where the prediction function is drawn uniformly randomly from the set of all prediction functions. But in this average case, we can invert the order in which the prediction function and the sample sets are chosen. Moreover, because the sample size is at most half of the size of x, we know that at least half of the time, this corresponds to the computation of the probability of our first no fringe theorem, which we know to be one half. Thus, there is a prediction function f for which our machine learning algorithm's expected probability of mispredictions is at least one fourth. QED. In the next video, I shall use this theorem to prove that unstructured infinite hypothesis classes are not pack learnable.